Hello, my name is Jose Ojeda and in this video I'm going to show you how to create a CRM using Developer Express SAF framework. Actually, I haven't prepared uh, anything for this tutorial. Uh, I just create a, sim a simple Word file where I list the things that I need to do for my CRM. Uh, I work as a freelancer most of the time, so for me, sometimes it's hard to, to keep track of everything that I'm doing. So I decided to create this small CRM and create a small tutorial so I can show you what you need to do if you're beginning to do in development in SAF framework. So uh, let me give you a little overview of what I'm going to do in this tutorial. I'm going to create a CRM uh, because uh, I work as a freelancer, so it's a CRM for freelancers. In the project overview, these are the entities that we're going to create. We're going to create the customer, the project, milestone, task, files, products and services, but this is going to be on the next stage. Billing and knowledge base, because most of the time I solve something and after a while I don't remember how to do it. So it's good to create a knowledge base of what you have done before so you don't have to spend time again on solving the same task over and over again. So regarding the, the classes, this is what I'm going to create. This is the ORM. First, I'm going to create a base class that will contain these fields created on, last updated, created by, and updated by. So every other class, like customer, is going to inherit from this one. So we will have this behavior on each class. So let's go to the other classes. Customer, I only want the name, the phone, the address, the contact person, and I want a list of contacts and a list, list of projects. The same for, for project, I want the name, the start date, the end date. Uh, most of the time I have a source controller on my project, so I want to know the URL because sometimes I use my source controller, sometimes I use my customer source controller. So uh, if you go back after a while, it's hard to remember. So I, I'm going to put this on the project. The budget, on money and the budget on hours because I want to make sure by the end of the project that I didn't put much time than the one that I'm I'm getting paid for. So I want to keep track of the budget hours and the total hours I'm going to spend on it so I can compare. That way it will help me in the future to, to give a more, um, exact price to my customers because most of the time when you work as a freelancer you end up uh, putting more work than the work that you're billing to the customer so i'm going to keep track of that the total hours on time that i'm spending on that project then the milestones i want the name the description of the milestones uh, then i think i put this uh, by mistake, I'm not going to use it. The, I'm going to keep track of the total hours and I'm going to keep track of the list of tasks by milestone. Then the task is really simple. It's only the description and the time I spend doing that task and the files uh, contain a description, uh, the file attachment, so I can attach a file to the database. Uh, I'm going to change this in the future, but right now I'm going to use the built-in functionality of SAF. And the project to which this file is related or attached. So I am still missing the products and services, the billing and the knowledge base, but that's going to come in the future. So let's start. I'm going to create the project using Visual Studio 2013.
and I'm going to create a new sub solution. I have two versions of developer express install. I got 15.1 and 14.2. Most of my projects right now are in 14.2, but in this case, since it's a test project and it's for myself, I'm going to use uh, version 15. So I'm going to create the freelancer CRM. Um, since some versions before, like two or three versions, SAF comes with this tutorial. Actually, I don't really like it, but let's go in through it because it's going to stay, I guess. So I'm going to create a Windows and a web application. I'm going to use Express Persistent Objects. For the security, sometimes security in SAF can be really tricky and it will create a lot of problems when you do process if you don't have permission on the on the entities you're using. So for example, if you're going to use, uh, you're going to do invoicing, but you're not going to have permission on the customer class, it will draw an exception, a null exception every time you're trying to, to use the customer on the invoice screen. So uh, for this case, we're going to use the standard, just login and password. And for security, we're not going to use the integrated mode because the integrated mode, what it does, it filters. If you don't have permission to use a class, uh, you will query it, but it will return null. So in this case, we're going to use um, UI level that is I think it's recommended for most of the cases. Well, the small cases, but if you're going to create an enterprise project, you have to use client-side security, but you have to really be aware of the entities related on each process. So every time you create a process, you don't end up having permission problems. In this case, I'm not going to add any module because I'm going to do it manually so you can see. So I think we're done with this project. So let's finish. Okay, everything done. So in here we have our module that is the agnostic pro project. It doesn't have a uh, reference to any Windows or web uh, platform. It only contains like agnostic, like for data access and stuff like that. Uh, we have our web module that contains reference to ASP.NET like this one system.web and we have the windows module that contains reference to windows forms assembly and we have both application here windows and web so in the next tutorial i'm going to show you how to add new classes and how to create your orm